I'm April Tomlin from April Tomlin Interiors. Welcome to Villa Tribe. This is the entry space of Villa Tribe and it is one of my favorite spaces in the entire home because of the texture that it has. So we did white oak wood walls. We did beams on the ceiling that are very slim. It creates the kind of the beam look, but not the Southern beam look. There was two little insets that we had. We put wallpaper on those spaces and little shelves. So we were able to sit art, um, candles, those types of things. The cool thing about this wall is you can actually shut these walls and close it up entirely to where it just looks like a wood wall with the light itself. Or you can open them up and if you're having guests, you can set little drinks. As uh, guests come in, they can grab a drink and continue on in the home. The first place that you stop from the entry, uh, the first visual space that you stop is the dining room. These ceilings are super tall. Pfeffert Road drew this beautifully and the windows and just the architecture um, of this space is just really on point. It made my job a lot easier. So we ended up doing a bone simple light. It is custom. We had to customize the size. It is huge um, because the space really needed it. We did a custom dining room table. We lucked out and found these vintage uh, leather black chairs. If you can look at each space and think, how can I bring something old into this very new space? It balances it out and it makes it feel more homey. It makes it feel lived in versus everything being brand new. Next up is the living space. This is also a very grand living room and balancing a grand living room can be difficult. It's like my one of the questions that I get asked the most. If it is two stories, you know, what do you do? So for me, I think the configuration of furniture is very important. Again, um, we had a vintage find that we really loved, which was the sectional because we did not feel like the standard two sofas, two chairs was really going to create the impact that this two stories needs. So we actually did all really low furniture, which you would think you would want really tall furniture for a tall space. But for me, I think it's actually more impactful to keep everything low and create like just unique sitting scenarios. The stone fireplace, we actually really um, wanted it to look a little older. So they actually hand chiseled these stones to be small and circular. And I really love the way that it turned out. So many living rooms have niches on the sides of fireplaces. And typically you would just do a bookshelf. What I really like to do, if I can find the right piece, is to use a vintage piece or a piece of furniture, whether it's a low console with a piece of art above it, just to make it feel a little less new and more lived in. So come into the sitting room with me. This is right off of the living room and dining room. The funny story about this home is that I actually built it for my family and ended up selling it. And this room was gonna be the playroom. I'm so happy that I got to design this space this way as a sitting room because it has become one of my favorite rooms maybe of all time that we've ever designed just because of the wallpaper, the moodiness, the coziness, and all the little pieces that are involved in this space. I really, really like um, spaces that have really large furniture to make them as moody as possible. We did a bar in this space and typically in a bar, in homes, you see fridge and freezer, ice makers, all that type of thing. If you just have a small little niche space, I think it's very convenient, uh, especially for an entertaining space, to have, if you don't have the fridge and all of those capabilities, to create a little landing space for just your glassware. And you obviously don't have to have alcohol out at all times, but you could obviously set this up for your friends when you're in this space. So what we did was we did a little marble ledge and that was kind of the artistic play. And then we built this in to hold some of the glassware. And um, if they were to entertain, they could just clear this off and put whatever they want to here. This is the kitchen and 
This kitchen, it just literally feels like you want to stay in this kitchen. One of the, the tricks um, is to lower the ceiling in a kitchen. It tends to be more inviting and it kind of pushes you into the space. We chose white oak for the ceilings. We stained the ceiling a little bit darker because you don't want all of your wood tones to be exactly the same. And then the walls and the cabinetry all match in their tones, but it is all vertical plank white oak. We chose our first island to be kind of the it piece. It is a kind of a hand carved Taj Mahal island uh, that has a bunch of leg detail. And um, the countertop person actually said that she would never do this again. So this might be the only time you see it because it was pretty intricate to get it. So this kitchen is a very large square. And over here, we chose uh, to wrap some marble, um, actually Taj Mahal quartzite around this door to create a little interest on this space. And we kept this space very clean. So we chose flush mounts all around the kitchen except for this window. And we chose a light that is unique and it has a little shape to it. The kitchen is very functional. I don't wanna make it seem all architectural because it is, it is extremely functional. On this range, these open up, like this can all open up to where you have all countertop space on both sides. So that if they had company, they could close it up and it would just be clean. We have two islands in the space, so you can sit at either island. Everything is cabinet front, so even though there's a ton of appliances in this kitchen, you can't spot them, which is really, really important. So behind the kitchen is the working pantry, and in the South, that's very common, especially in Nashville, and this is just an extra kitchen. You can host more appliances in there, double ovens, microwaves, coffee, things like that, and food. So we typically do that in a lot of our homes. In this butler's pantry, we actually did more of a deep olive green color. And um, another trick is stained cabinets are always more expensive than painted cabinets. So when you switch to the next room and you're trying to save some cost, it is um, a, a really good thing to just pick a really cool color and go the cabinets, the walls, the trim, pretty much everything but the ceiling. But if you wanna do the ceiling, you can also do that. In this space, we chose to have the ceiling the same color as all the other ceilings and take a, more of a monochromatic olive green uh, tone into the space. <laughs> So this is the exterior space and it is directly off the kitchen. I love how the architects Pfeffer Trode set this up. Kind of the vision was you would roll out of the kitchen and you would be able to cook and eat right off of the kitchen. This entire backyard has a retaining wall. Um, it was necessary, it had to have it. And so we really thought about how to utilize the retaining wall in a way that made it feel like we meant to do it, and that was by creating this villa-like experience back here. This is just a place that you can sit and lounge if you are choosing to eat um, in this area of the backyard. And then you can follow me. So many people have very long porches and what you need to do if you do have a very long porch is break it up. We broke this porch up into thirds. So this portion of the porch is just the sitting, relaxing, having a cocktail um, with your husband or your friends um, area of the porch. This area of the porch is the actual living space. So we have a fireplace and a TV. This is where you would actually sit and watch TV. It's sand colored fabrics, white colored metal, and then mix it up with like a cool funky chair like this with blues and just the straps and just everything that um, is detailed on this chair really elevates it. This is the third area of the porch. We actually found this at Market, it's vintage. I love this. If you find pieces like this, just grab them. Finding a really cool vintage style dining for your exteriors is pretty rare to see and I 
really love it. I do wanna take a minute to talk about this walkway to the pool. Day Rick, who's the landscape architect here, we work together and he is a mastermind and so is Ann Day. We did some really cool plants along this wall to kind of fill up the space. And we always try to bring water outside, even if it's not the pool, because that noise really helps a home feel like a home. When I thought it was my home, we really struggled with where to put this pool. At first it started in the middle. We decided to use the retaining wall. And now we have clients actually asking to build retaining walls um, so that they can have this experience because we use the, uh, the retaining wall for planting. Dayrick did a beautiful job and we actually created a little bench at the end of the pool so you can swim up and lay at the end of the pool. And um, this beautiful water feature coming off the back wall. And it is just, it's, it is one of my favorite pools, period. This is the hallway down to the master and it is a really long hallway. So you do have to kind of create little vignettes in a long hallway. This is the first little stop and uh, one cool thing you could do in any hallway in your home, especially if you have a new build, is we took a pendant and we put it really close to the wall so that it looks more like art. This is the actual master. So what we did here was we changed colors. We did a, this is Portola Paints, it's a lime wash, and we chose a green color. And this is the color that we chose from the walkway into the master sitting and the master sitting. To find something more textural is always really important as you're kind of walking through a space and seeing all the pieces and how they lay out. This is the primary bedroom sitting area. This is such a cozy little space. We made this space very artistic because sometimes you don't have the opportunity to do that in a master. We did this amazing, very um, cool green bookshelf. I think it's from First Dibs. And we found this art at Market um, in a vintage shop. And I really love the juxtaposition of it sitting to the right because this piece is tall on the left. And I think that when you walk into this space, it just feels artistic and feels architectural and lovely. And you wanna sit in here, but you also are inspired in this space. And then you come to the master. Space. It is all wood. There's so much to talk about and address in this master in particular. When I first sat down to think about this master, I knew that the bed was going to be in front of the windows and instantly I started thinking, how am I going to make that view special? And the light is, it was, is really the play in this room. So I literally drew it onto some napkin and handed it to one of my amazing designers and said, hey, can we make this light that hangs from the ceiling and it goes all the way over to the nightstands and hangs over the nightstands. And of course, the answer was no, that's too long, but they're amazing and they figured it out. We did a custom headboard and a stripe and cute little nightstands and then vintage pink chairs. Over here to the left, we did kind of a high-low game. So this is just an off-the-shelf piece dresser um, and an amazing piece of art over top. But we did like a double layer of curtains. So when you close them, the back is a sheer and the top is a linen. And that is really great for masters when you're not doing Romans, no shutters, none of that, because you can get the privacy or you can get like a little bit of light in. And I do want to give you one trick. If you are building a home and you're planning to do that, move the vents on the floor up at least 12 inches or more or the air like hits them and goes up and that's something that I've learned the hard way. And so that is the master. This is the master bathroom and we actually pulled the green back in from the sitting room. So this is a, um, a plaster instead of a lime wash because in bathrooms, the lime wash should hold up, but the plaster definitely holds up against moisture a little better, but we use the same green tone. The floor, we chose this beautiful rock tile and we pulled it up onto the baseboards. We chose a metal door for the shower. This is the tub area and 
All the faucets in this space are this green patina. Super interesting. And we actually had the faucet come to the front a bit so that you did not miss it. And a couple unique things that you can do in a tub area is do wall lights, art. We always do an interesting hook with uh, some beautiful towels. And it literally is as simple as that to create interest around your tub area. For this vanity, this is actually a piece of stone at a stone yard that we found that looked like wood. We did this art with Pfeffer to Road and hidden doors on each side. So obviously we lost storage. We lost functionality by doing this. So we gained it back on the sides. Into the guest bedroom. There are two up here. We wanted to not overdo it in this room. This is not where we wanted to pump all of the money. So we kept it very simple. And we just did this headboard wall to wall that we made and then bought, purchased a platform for the bed and mattress itself. We used Tomlin House bedding and a really cozy pillow. And other than that, in guest rooms, we kept the colors pretty neutral in this one and did this vintage blue light to kind of add a little pop. Almost everything in here is off the shelf. For the second guest bedroom, we chose a salmon, kind of a deep salmon colored paint color. And that is something that I would encourage everybody to do if you're trying to save costs and you already have to paint the space, is picking a really cool color because that can really elevate it without doing a wood, a wallpaper, or the like. This room is what the client calls the findings room. So when they first told us about the findings room, we were like, what is a findings room? And what it is, is they like to collect things in their travels all over the world. And so our job was really to create a haven for that. And so what we did was we chose this kind of mustard color wall. And we really feel like this wall color is great for antique pieces. And we built these bookshelves. Um, in the shape of an art so that it has a little bit of interest, but it does house all of their things. This is a Thomas Hayes swing. It's so beautiful. The experience of this space, you can see it off two different hallways. And so you can see this swing from multiple different angles in the home. And it's just a gorgeous piece that is so detailed. This is the bridge that kind of passes over the living room and the dining room. And we did it in glass with a white oak rail. It's just so pretty. It's just so great to have a texturized piece like this because it really does kind of stop your eye in a hallway versus more of a flat piece of art. So that is a great way to break up a really long hallway. is the uh, hangout lounge space upstairs. It's kind of right off of the recording studio and the music room. The person that lives here is an artist and so they spend a lot of time in their home playing music, recording music, and they definitely needed a space to kind of hang out with people that they write with or their friends. And uh, so this room we treated with all reclaimed wood, the ceilings, the walls, and that type of wood, getting it right is very tricky. So you have to almost cull out the wood pieces that you like, because if you've ever seen an old barn, it definitely has a variety of colors and we wanted it to kind of be more consistent across the board. So we ended up picking out the pieces that were more gray in tones and it is really a beautiful backdrop for this space. I really like when you go into a rustic space rustic walls, those types of things. Instead of like diving into metals and dark leather, those types of things, I really like to bring in boucles and soft fabrics. And so that is what we did in this space. So every sofa, all of the chaise lounges, the chairs, the ottomans, they're all light. They all are different colors, but kind of the same. And every texture is different and every texture is soft. So that is kind of how we made this space feel like a little prettier.
thank you guys so much for coming along with us on the Villa Tribe home tour. We've truly loved designing this home. It is so funky and cool and casual all at the same time. And I could not have done this without my amazing design team, the design team of Pfeffer Trode Architecture and the design team of Day Rick Landscape. Thank you so much to all the design team for pouring your souls into a project. You can really tell on this one. And um, thank you to the client for entrusting us with your vision and letting us do our job. And thanks to all of you for watching this, staying tuned in, because we try to give you as much information as possible. So we just really appreciate you engaging with our homes as we pour our heart out on these videos. So until the next time, this is Villa Tribe.